Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Oye Dimelo Cinema Club. My name is Don Dino Espacini, and I'll be your host for this evening or day, whenever you're watching this. But I'm not alone. With me, I have Marina, Jason, and Steve. Boom, boom, boom. And the movie that we're going to talk about today is Still a Michael J. Fox movie. It's a documentary. It came out this year. And yeah, it's a movie, a documentary that I knew was coming out and I was really interested in watching it, but I knew I was going to get super sad. <laughs> so when when it came my turn to pick the movie, I was like, okay, I, I want other people to be sad uh, with me. And uh, that's why I picked it. So before I talk about, well, real quick, Michael J. Fox, a uh, huge fan as a little kid. I actually watched pretty much every movie they talked about in this uh, documentary. So I'm excited to hear your guys' first thoughts. And were you a Michael Jackson fan? Did you see a bunch of his movies? Uh, how much did you know about him having Parkinson or dealing with it? So to get us going, let's start with uh, Steve. Uh, alrighty, uh, first impressions, initial thoughts. Um, I am a big Michael J. Fox fan, uh, but I only really know him from very few things. For example, I've never, ever, ever in my life seen Family Ties. Uh, I think I first got introduced to him by Back to the Future and then Teen Wolf. Uh, and then way later on Spin City. Uh, but I, I didn't really watch Spin City that much. It was just like random episodes that would just pop here and there. Uh, but primarily, I would say Back to the Future was what like caught me with him. And by watching this documentary, one there were many things that shocked me about it. Uh, the first thing that really shocked me uh, was the fact that he was filming Family Ties and at the same time, like, filming Back to the Future. And when I saw that, the whole schedule thing that he had was insane. Also, before that, when he was, like, just surviving off McDonald's and, like, selling his things to basically have something to eat, to, like, scrape by as the acting career, like, I felt very identified with that. Um, and it also, like, I, I thought, especially by watching this, that, like, he's a very, like, he's varying his head. He's a guy that's, he's very thoughtful. Like, even rewatch, like, I, I rewatched, uh, after finishing, I rewatched a few scenes of this, uh, film documentary. And, um, he's very, very, like, I don't know, poignant? I don't know how to say that word, but like, uh, he's very selective with like the words he chooses. He's very thoughtful. Like I could tell that he thought a lot just to specifically say these things. And yeah, man, I'm, 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 I was a big fan. Uh, it's, it's sad, like to go through such a thing. And, uh, and especially towards the end when, the filmmaker guy, the guy behind camera, asked him, are you in pain? That was, that was very powerful to me. And I'm happy that that got put into the film as well because he always kept his sense of humor. He always kept everything being upbeat, but he never fully like opened up about his pain and everything until he starts talking about his dad when he was passing away and until he gets confronted about his pain. And I w I'm, I'm very glad that I saw this, uh, especially as a, as a person that I enjoy Back to the Future. And especially, I, I really enjoy the details of when he was acting, they were showing like he had to like pop a pill and he was thinking like, oh my God, I got like four or five minutes. It's like, he's thinking about the lines, but he's also thinking like, I need to also pop this pill so I can disguise that I have Parkinson's. Like, man, what? 
it's a crazy, crazy journey that he's been through. And I'm just happy that he has like a core support because one thing that was very highlighted in this film was uh, the support that he has from his family, from his wife, from his kids. Um, and yeah, it was very important for me to watch this. So yeah, thank you so much for recommending this Dino and that's my first impression. Awesome. All right, well, let's go with Marino. Yeah, so, whoo. Um, my first impressions were just knock me off my mother freaking feet. Like, I, I was just <laughs> so overwhelmed with emotions. Like, I watched this bad boy twice because I was just like, wow. Um, Steve brought up a lot of good points that I, I definitely relate with as far as first impressions go. Um, but it was just so interesting, like being a person, you know, having dreams in the same industry that this character has and had and overcame, you just really felt every part of his journey. Like even the, the health part, even though you didn't, um, I, I obviously don't have anything near, um, what he's going through and has been going through, but just thinking about just the endurance that you like one has to take on to like live it to, to really get their dreams. Like it was just, it was very emotional for me. And I think it was also emotional for me because I think about how hard people worked in his era and they just don't have the, they didn't have the outlets that we have now. Um, I just feel like his work ethic, if you would have had Instagram or TikTok, he could have, you know, had so much more longevity, but just like, there's no matter how hard you worked back then, like there were just so many more hurdles to jump over. Um, but I just like his endurance was just so inspiring on so many levels. Um, and I also just like, my time frame's a little off. I'm a little bit younger than like where his career started. So yeah, I too didn't watch like Family Ties. I didn't even, I don't even think I've ever heard of the show. I'm not going to lie for it to be such a huge part of his career. Um, but just, it kind of just made me sad. Like this person that was like on my TV screen for a couple of hits, like had no idea what he was going through. I do remember um, when it came out, that he had Parkinson's, but like, it was so light in the news, like, and it's just someone's life. <laughs> and it's just like, it just really, really makes you feel bad that you didn't really keep up with someone that like provided us with so many classics. Um, but yeah, my first impression I was kind of sad, but it was also very inspiring. Cool. Cool. Uh, Mr. Eccles, would you like sharing your first impressions of the documentary? Oh, I think you're muted. Let me unmute. Oh, great. Uh, sorry about that. Thank you. Uh, Seth, yeah, thanks, Dino. So um, <clears throat> I really like this movie, First Impression. Uh, I liked it a lot, actually. It was a really good documentary. And uh, like the rest of you guys, there's a lot of stuff that I did know and a lot of stuff I didn't know. Um, I my uh, My relationship to Michael J. Fox is being an 80s baby, essentially, because... He was everywhere. He was everywhere for a time. It's like you just had to know who Michael J. Fox was. He was like he was like synonymous with the 80s because of the movies that he had done. I think my first um my first time ever seeing him in anything, real talk, was probably Teen Wolf, honestly. I was a kid and that caught my attention. And then like shortly after, like probably, I mean really right after that i discovered back to the future but teen wolf was really the first one and then like you know i used to watch family ties and like hey isn't that teen wolf isn't that the guy from back to the future marty mcfly like so yeah i was watching all that stuff man i didn't watch most of his stuff after back to the future though after the third back to the future i didn't like watch doc hollywood or um any of the other things they were in i was aware of them but to this day i've never seen them <clears throat> but I have like kind of kept up with Michael J. Fox. Um, you know, when I was uh, in college, I remember he did the Actor Studio, which was uh, great. And he told a lot of the stories uh, on Actor Studio that he tells in this documentary. So I knew about the sectional couch thing. He talked about that. Um, he talked about um, the work schedule. I think that he was shooting up at the same time. What was nice about the documentary, though, it goes into detail. 
of what happened. So yeah, I knew he shot him at the both times. And I always thought like, wow, that's crazy that he was shooting these shows simultaneously. But then I never thought about like what that actually meant. I never thought about it meaning, you know, 18 hour days for like two months or whatever it took, three months. Um, yeah, and, you know, and I really, the part that really like emotionally kind of, um, I don't want to say triggered me, but sort of like emotionally, you know, sort of set me in, in a different place was just the relationship that he had with his wife. I thought that was like really beautiful, man. Like not just that she stuck with him or whatever, but just like her patience to endure and how much she cared about him and coming to doctor's appointments and whatnot. I'm like, wow, what a really great partner he has. Like he has the perfect partner, seemingly the perfect partner for what he's going through. And she's, you know, uh, available and ready for him. And, you know, um, you know, just being good to one another. And I thought that was like really nice to see in the documentary. And I do sort of remember her from the show, actually. I remember her little character's arc when she was on there. Um, and she, I mean, she's so poised. She seems like she would have had a terrific acting career, honestly. Um, yeah, those were my first impressions of it. Uh, but yeah, I really liked it a lot. Um, I was pretty aware. Yeah, I've been pretty aware of him. I even watched him on uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm. He had, uh, he had like a season. He was on there for a season. Or well, maybe even a couple seasons he was on that show but he was terrific on those so like i always knew michael j fox was like funny and seems like he might even be funnier now but i love how mm -hmm. he sort of approaches his life with uh humor and uh, he tries to make the best of a situation that he has no choice about um uh, yeah i really like it and you know i really like michael j fox noise noise <clears throat> all right uh let me jump into my first impressions yeah, also 80s baby here. I um, think uh, Jason might be a little older than me. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think the first thing I did watch was Back to the Future. And uh, grow growing up in Paraguay, we didn't get family ties. But when I would come visit my American cousins, I remember the reruns maybe already on there or whatever. So I knew I was like, oh, this is, a, this is uh, Marty, you know, and all that. And then, of course... I would see uh, Teen Wolf, but all those, like the the success one, like all the different like uh, movies, I, they would pop on uh, on cable once I got cable and I would watch them. He even did the voice in Homeward Bound, which I love Homeward Bound. Yes. <laughs> so, like, yeah, so like I, I remember seeing like everything, like if it had, like, and I, it's sad because they're like, just given the worst reviews, right? Like it starts getting it worse and worse. The secret of my success, like all these fam, you know, different shows, uh, movies, and I'm just like, as a little kid, I love them. I was like, this is great. What are you talking about? It's Michael J. Fox. This is fun. Like all these crazy, crazy little movies. But anyway, so I had way back in the day. He, he had already been, I also ended up watching Spin City a lot, just because, um, yeah, and that's where my humor started to kind of change a little bit more, or I started to get more American or satire, right? That was satire, uh, satirizing, you know, um, uh, small, well, not small, because it was, I think, the mayor of New York or whatever. Anyway, but definitely watch Spin City. I knew some of the stuff from uh, what he had dealt with because I had seen an older documentary. I don't know if he was involved with it, but I knew about that kind of uh, uh, his story that he was from Canada and all that. But kind of like Steve saying, like the in-depth that they went into this, because I knew of the evening shoots and the morning shoots and all that, that, you know, the how they did that and really went in-depth with that, I thought was really cool because i wasn't aware of that much but i also do remember seeing back to the future documentary or people like we've like memorized lines and this and that and they'll go up to him and like they'll be like hey what was this thing in the time machine or this thing and he's like i'm sorry guys like i was shooting all day family ties and then all night back to the future i can't remember anything <laughs> we just kind of like just, you know, spread so thin that he's just kind of like, I don't really remember anything from Back to the Future because it was all shoots through the middle of the night. Anyway, 
That's so yeah, funny. I thought I thought um, I, I'm glad Steve brought that up about the, the the ending with the pain. I also noticed, and maybe Marina noticed it because she saw it twice. It has a uh, spoiler for the documentary of Michael J. Fox, but uh, it has a very abrupt ending. What so it made me think of like what did what did you guys and we've talked a little bit about it. But what did you think of the style of the documentary? That it had a little bit of um, uh, uh, foot, stock foot, not stock footage, footage from him in the movies and all that. And he's always running and he's always doing that kind of movement from behind with a little bit of, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, when they, uh, reenactment? Because it, was, it wasn't him as a young person kind of going through it. Uh, so what what did you guys think of the way they edited that in and part of the storytelling of how they they used that as well with the ending that it was abrupt that it's him talking and then it just ends uh so yeah uh jason's nodding so how about we start with you so yeah when it kind of ended i was a little like it was abrupt and i thought about it for a second i'm like well that's over that's what I thought because that's how it felt like they wanted it to end. Um, you know, it was like you said, I, I feel like there was probably another ending in there, but also it's sort of like, uh, it feels like, well, he's still alive. There's still more story to tell. So it's just like, this is where our story ends for this part of this guy's life. That's what it felt like. So yeah, it did feel abrupt, but that's how, that was the feeling behind it for me. Okay. Uh, Marina? I really like the style of the documentary. I actually don't really care for documentaries. So I was like, oh boy, here we go, a documentary. <laughs> but I think that um, it was, it made you feel like it kind of was a movie, which is like more up my alley, um, just based on that. And like, wow, like they had so much good footage, like stock footage, like from back in the day, like to where it would just align with some of the things that were like being in the, whoever edited that was like on it. Cause like, it Terrific. really kept person like me who has like an attention disorder. That's why I struggle with documentary sometimes. Cause sometimes the pace is just like, like, and I'm just like, let me just Wikipedia this. What happened to this man? Like, I don't, <laughs> I, I can't watch this any longer. Like it kept you pretty engaged with some of that content. And, um, and then like on the favorite part that I feel like we all kind of, whether you knew about it or not, like knowing his schedule, I really love that editing. It's kind of make you feel it. And like, again, I've never been through anything like that. I obviously haven't had a hit show and movie filming at the same time. But it just reminded me of like even doing background on a show and you you like you rap at 1 a.m. on one and then you have to be at the next one at seven and you have to be hair and makeup ready. You just felt like the struggle. Like it was just and I really do like the way that was edited. Like they showed him getting the car and picking him up and putting him down, starting the coffee. Like and you're just like, ooh, like you just I love that visualization. And then, yeah, the ending, yeah, I almost thought there was something wrong with my phone because I watched it on my phone the first time. <laughs> I was like, shoot. I gotta... And then, like, so it's probably another reason why I watched it again because I was like, let me make sure I didn't miss things, like, on the phone. But, um, yeah, yeah. So I agree. Maybe it's just, like, that's it. Like, <laughs> thanks for watching. <laughs> yeah, the definitely the the ending I was the same. I felt the same way. Like I was like, wait, is there like an Avengers movie? I was like, is there something after the credits that <laughs> is going to happen? The future. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, like I, I thought something else was going to happen, but in a way, you know, I, I, at the end, like I'm, I'm sure it was his call of like that's how I want it, and he gave you so much about himself, like in the sense of like. For example, I didn't know, I never saw him like as a dick, you know, but like he said, yo, I was when I was in the heat of my prime of everything, like I was acting a bit like a dick and I yeah. formed an alcohol problem and all this stuff. And it wasn't until I met this incredible woman, which I'm actually happy because that, that's the that's the one thing besides the Parkinson's. That's honestly the only real thing that I knew about his personal life. I didn't know who he was married to. I didn't know if he had children. I didn't know none of those things. So it was 
it was great to see that. And it was great also for him to mention, even though it was brief, they didn't go really in depth with that. But it, it was great to see that he was like, when I'm with them, like my disease basically doesn't exist. They treat me like, a, you know, like a regular person. And that was cool to see. And uh, also one point that it's like, it's so quick, but it's like, I wish I would have honed in a little better. But again, it's his artistic direction and everything was when he's, you know, he's like practicing with the trainer to like walk properly and not fall. And he goes like, because he's always has the pressure of like, I have to uh, like, I, there's people that tell me like, I bring them joy and I help them and I have to like keep doing this. And he goes, the dude goes like, uh, you know, sometimes you don't have to be Michael J. Fox, you know, like you don't have to be like, you can just be you, like <laughs> you don't have to constantly have that pressure. And it was very brief, but it was like, for me, it was like such an uh, important moment because yeah, just like he said in the beginning, when he blew up and he was like in every magazine and everything, he will see his picture and he's like, that's a character. Like, that's not even me. Yep. And uh, yeah, man, it, it's just, and it was so cool to see that like um, it, it, those same things that have happened for years, like happened in the eighties and all that is still happening today that when you are, living in a place like Los Angeles and then you get caught up in the fame and everything, you do need things to keep you grounded because you can get lost in that world. So I was, it was great also to see that from time to time he will go visit his parents and like, be like, I'm a regular guy. I'm not this big shot when I'm with my dad, you know? And, and also to sh to see that, like how much the death of his father affected him. Like I could tell that, at, in that moment, he was like, man, I wish I would have worked a little less and spent a little bit more time with my dad uh, when he went through that. And uh, yeah, it just humanized, like it just made, honestly, like it just made me like him even more. Just the fact that he's having like all this self-reflection and like all these moments and still, still going through such a painful disease that I have no idea how painful it is. Like he still keeps his sense of humor when he fell. Like in the moment he fell in the beginning that he told the lady, like, I fall, you made me fall over for you or something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like you knocked me off my feet guy, or something you know? like that. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah. The, I, I, I think the ending like that, that jolt is to also make us feel like it can just happen like that. Right. I mean, He's talked about it, you know, he's like, I don't think I'll make it to I'm uh, to my 80s, right? Like, he basically now needs someone to kind of constantly be with him, right? Because he keeps breaking, he keeps falling. So I, I thought maybe that's kind of what, and following the whole idea, he can never be still. I thought that was such a, you know, like, I wanted more. And also, we all wanted to, like, oh, man, I want to... Like he has such a sense of humor still and all that kind of morose or gallows humor, which his whole family even plays in with. So, um, yeah. And why am I muted still? No, no you're good. No, we can hear you just fine. Uh, so the one thing I did not know about Parkinson's that I learned through this documentary was the fact that basically your facial expressions like go away. That was something that I did not know. I, I knew about the movement, but I didn't know about like, you can't basically show that much expression. That's crazy. Cause you still felt all his energy. Yeah. Like what a, what a performer. Oh, but I'll let so, you finish. <laughs> Uh, well, anyway, for a couple of things. Yeah, so I really enjoyed the editing because I had, like I said, I had seen a documentary about it before, but the way they did this, like really got the emotion and like the anxiety, like you, it felt like you were writing, you know, on like a flying on the wall of like his, you know, uh, rise to the top and then, you know, his issues. 
So I did really enjoy the editing and all that. And I wanted to go to kind of you saying what you needed, uh, what you knew about Parkinson, if anyone uh, like knew more about it before going into this or has a family member or friend that that might have it. Um, the one I found out, I have an uncle in Paraguay who I guess has it. Um, and clearly it happened before after uh, he got diagnosed after was already in the U.S., but he was able to actually come to the U.S. and get treatment. But when I was there last year, it was the first time I've seen him, I don't know, 20 years or something. And yeah, when he when we're just standing still, like he's shaking and, and like his leg, but like he would play soccer and I would go away or we'd play padel, which is kind of like a tennis game. And then he wouldn't be shaking and he would beat my ass. And then in between serves, he's like shaking the paddle and all that. But there's something, and clearly, by the time he he was diagnosed and got it, um, there's been so much more medicine and treatment, and a lot of that thanks to you know Michael J. Fox Foundation and all the the stuff that they're they've been doing. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of I guess my more recent experience with. Uh, Parkinson. I don't know if anyone else has. I, um, I personally don't have someone close to me with Parkinson's, but I another thing that I learned because I had no idea was the fact that he got it in his late twenties. Yeah, and that was like crazy to me. I was like, "What?" Like I thought he got it like I don't know, forties maybe, but like the fact that it was like on his twenties that was crazy. And the other thing that I wish. I would have known a little bit better would be what like I like something that I just kept in my brain is like, man, he's taking so many pills and it's like, is that making it worse? Like I know it like temporary relieves, but like does that like the secondary effects and all that stuff, does that make it worse? Uh, and also like ha has there been any like leaps and bound progress when it comes to that? Because didn't they raise was it two billion dollars? Can't remember, but it's it's been a lot for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I know that p part of it is just like, from my understanding, they feel like I've heard some other stuff where they found like the or not found or discovered, but the medication they're coming up with has gotten better and better, and also just the fact that people are able to. Um, uh, what is it when you can tell early, early signs or whatever, kind of like with so many other um, medical conditions or whatever, uh, we were getting better and better at, at recognizing what there are before it's kind of like too late or before it deteriorates. And so that's kind of what, I don't know if he mentioned it in this or, or later, but like in five or 10 years, they might, uh know what to check in the genes or something like that to see that you're more prone to having it did they talk about that in this or is it a different interview i don't um, think so yeah yeah but i i think it's getting around that point also where it's kind of like there's gonna be able to you're gonna be able to tell earlier on from like your genes and stuff like that if you have it um i will yeah go no i this this is unrelated to Parkinson's this is more about the acting stuff. Uh, I one thing that I highly identified uh, and man that was like such powerful words. Um, I'm super paraphrasing but uh, the fact when he was describing what it takes to be a successful actor that you have to be lucky and unstable enough <laughs> to basically, make it as an actor because you're constantly trying to be something you're not that you lose yourself and you don't even know who you are like oh my god like that hit me like so hard yeah i do appreciate yeah. his i mean you know i don't watch a lot of documentaries i can't really say compared to too many other people but i do appreciate his story on that on the process of becoming successful because I feel like too many people get to where they want to be and they minimize the hard parts like 
and try to tell you, you wake up every day at 6 a.m., you know, <laughs> it's like, it's so yeah. much deeper than that. And there is luck involved. Like, this is not, you know, this isn't something that, like, if you do A, B, and C, you'll you'll get D. Like, no, if you do A, B, and C, you still have to wait for someone to give you a chance. Give you the D. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, but yeah. But yeah, I'm, I just I'm, like, I'm going <laughs> to <laughs> But I, too, I, too... Funny enough, um, I want to say, again, you guys are 80s babies. I'm a 90s baby. So a lot of this stuff was, like, so, like, I don't even know. Like, yeah, when you I was, guys are too many. I'm a 90s baby, too. So. Oh, sorry. We're, okay, my bad. Um, a lot of this stuff was, like, in the back burner of my subconscious of, like, what's going on in life. So for me, I probably was, like, 17 by the time I realized that the guy from Back to the Future was the guy from Life with Mikey. Like, I didn't even put, like, I didn't really know him as well known. Yeah. I just used an actor on a VHS that we had in the house. And, um, yeah, I, I probably didn't know for a while that that was the same guy. And I actually loved Life, Life with Mikey more. And that's one of his, like, worst rated films. <laughs> and I wasn't, I, really in, I, I wasn't really into Back to the Future like that for it to be such a cult following. But I was just so young. Um it made but, me want to watch all, all those movies now to see, yeah. like, as an adult, do they suck? Cause I well, I watched, I watched Homeward Bound with my son, like, two days ago because I was just like, let me support. <laughs> Maybe let's get the streams up. And it's cute. I loved it. But I could be biased because, like I said, these were my movies. These were my VHSs. Like, I loved Homeward Bound. I cry every time Shadow tramples over the hill and comes home to the family. Well, what did your kid think of it? I mean, yeah, probably nothing. He's four. Oh, <laughs> he I mean, really... was, he, was he entertained by it? Did he watch it? Yeah, he watched it a little bit, but he's not very well, like, like twenty minutes. If he's four, what are you not gonna? Yeah, he's watching and he's jumping up the couch half. and eating eating chips. Like he, did, yeah, he says and he's not a movie watcher yet. Like he likes like YouTube videos. It's a whole different yeah. generation now. Short, like yeah. short films. But that's why I I kind of want to watch Strays. Because I'm like, oh, it's Homeward Bound. Then, like, for me as an adult now, I feel like yep. I'm going to love it. Yeah. But, like, you know, kids these the days first, probably won't. The first time I ever heard of Parkinson's is when he got it and it was in the news. And they were like, oh, he and um, what's the fighter? Is it? Mah I don't want to mess it up. Mah um, and they were saying how they both have it. And I, I, it is so crazy to me that this came full circle and now there's a documentary. I remember thinking about that so much and being so scared if someone hit me in the head, was I going to grow up yeah. and have this? Like, I was terrified for, like, a month, like, just thinking about it. And But, again, these were such back burner thoughts at such a young age. I think that's what made me so emotional. It's like that news was news to me, and it was intense for me for a month. But this is a person's life years later and he's still going through it and i didn't know it was degen degenerative i didn't know it got worse so i'm just thinking it's the handshakes like i didn't realize it and so when he first walked away and i was like oh my gosh it affects his walking now like, i didn't know yeah. that it i thought it was just like you lose control of like your hand or sometimes like your leg i didn't realize it gets worse and worse and worse and there wasn't a cure so it makes me so sad like tw you know 20 years have gone by and this man has just been getting worse and yeah. worse and you normally they don't yeah like they said that people normally don't get it until they're like in their 60s or something like that in their 70s so i guess an old person that was really interesting right this is an old person uh disease or or thing um Oh, I was like, uh, yeah, my uncle kind of walks with a, a, a kind of not as bad as Michael J. Fox, but that's because they kind of found it pretty quickly, and there was now medication that he's he was able to take almost immediately, which clearly there wasn't. Um, but I also feel like, because honestly, like, who else besides Michael J. Fox that's like a major name? that's been like a spokesperson for Parkinson's. Like, I feel well, like- Muhammad Ali. I feel like they Muhammad, partner together. But Muhammad As Ali- As a matter of fact, they did commercials together. Yeah. For Parkinson's awareness. Well, Muhammad Ali only had Parkinson's or he had other diseases? Uh, I mean, Parkinson's Parkinson was the big one. He might have towards the end. No, it I was think... mainly Parkinson's. I mean, but they think his came kind of because he, he didn't he do didn't defense. Know. He just took it. To the head, and Michael J. Fox talked about that it was a chemical imbalance. Actually, 
So they kind of mentioned it a little bit, like him and Woody Harrelson would have ridiculous parties. So I recommend everyone on YouTube to find uh, the the Woody Harrelson speech uh, when he gave uh, uh, Michael J. Fox the honorary Oscar and then Michael J. Fox acceptance speech. Because I think they only showed a tiny clip. But Woody Harrelson's speech, I was like, I didn't know they were that close or whatever. But it was like, uh, he goes into depth about it and and that, and also about how hard they would party. <laughs> and I'm just like, holy shit. So it kind of makes sense. I don't know. They were doing some crazy shit. Also, he was doing 190 miles on Ventura Boulevard. <laughs> I love it. And the cop let him go away. Oh. The privilege. No, he didn't say 190. He said 90. Oh, okay. Okay. Either way. 90 to 100. On, that's maybe, that's yeah. not a highway. That's a that's a street with lo- lights and stuff. Yeah, on Ventura, 90 <laughs> is crazy. <laughs> it's funny that you brought up Woody and like not knowing the friendship. Like I am a sentimental sap. So like seeing all those pictures of like him and other people that were like in their prime at that time, it made me yeah. so emotional because some of them are big now. Some of them are not. And it was just like, these were, they were buddies. They were like, that was his crew. I don't know. I was just like, this is such a weird thing to get emotional about. But like, I saw the girl from like Dirty Dancing. I saw the girl from 16 Candle. I'm like, they were, they were friends. Like, I never knew. I never yeah, knew. They were like, all the like, hottest thing in town, like together. To me, like, the cr- to, me, to me, the craziest thing is just how overnight that changed. Like he was literally like selling stuff to eat. And then all yeah. of a sudden, boom, became and a they big didn't want, they, they, they didn't want him, right? I mean, mm-hmm. uh, the, yeah, for Johnson even family Tyler. ties. Yeah. And that's one of those, maybe it shows with family in it, right? Because family ties was supposed to be about the parents and family matters was supposed to be about the family. And then all of a sudden it turned into the Steve Urkel show just because it's like, you know, this young. I feel like kid. all those shows from that time period, because, because there are so many funny people that they didn't really know was that funny, like comedians and shit like that. Yeah. Like that, they sort of emerged as the stars of the shows. That happened yeah. all throughout the eighties and nineties. They don't allow that anymore. That's not a thing anymore. Like today's Hollywood, it could have been like this in the past, but today's Hollywood will cut you if you outshine the star. Yeah, so many of stories of that of yeah of different shows, and someone's like, "I was funnier than the lead," and so they got cut, or the show didn't make it. Right, it's just recast it there can only be and it's sad when it's minorities i think that's where it gets bad because i've heard some stuff about different latino sitcoms and stuff like that and it's like you know we we instead of helping you know helping out and opening more doors for our brethren if you will it's like oh no there can only be one a-list latino in hollywood at the time and uh, so that's kind of sad that that happens more to minorities because got to everyone. There's one bone and everybody wants to get it. Yeah. Um, what's the there's other so many thing about old Hollywood and new Hollywood? Like I love some of the progress, but sometimes it is kind of cool that you had more of a chance like back in the day because there was like yeah. real like open calls like they went through hundreds of people and let them all come in and give it a shot now it's like if your agent doesn't get it in for you <laughs> you'll never know about the audition like it's it's pros and cons like or or rent was fifty dollars right <laughs> uh, it's like i know what, what what how many cents did he need to get like french i have like what <laughs> But no, I felt that, you know, we probably have all gone through like anybody whose parents aren't extremely wealthy, like, and you're trying or they don't believe in your dream. Um, like McDonald's has held it down for a lot of actors. <laughs> yeah. And now uh-huh. I'm sad that the dollar menu is like kind of gone. Like nothing's just a dollar anymore on there. I'm like. Did someone share that the hot dog went up at Costco? It's now one thing oh, yeah. or something like that. That was you. <laughs> Times are rough, you know. And they um, make you have um they make you have a membership for the restaurant now. You used to just be able to like if it was outside, you just get a hot dog with pizza. 
I've I don't never even s- think I had that hot dog once, maybe twice, but that's because I don't have a membership, so I was with someone else. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, anyone have any uh, questions uh, or want to bring some other stuff up that um, from from the documentary before we get into final thoughts? Probably there are so many levels to yeah. that. Um, where we could talk on night, but oh, we oh, I guess oh, we were kind of finishing up with uh, the idea of kind of the struggle and all that, and then the the whole there are other documentaries on Back to the Future. I think there's also one on Netflix, uh, kind of an uh, anniversary one, and that is ridiculous. Just how that got made, how they they had a different actor, and then it got recasted, and all that. And the talking about how he thinking you're not going to get something in an overnight because that script, they were working on it for seven years or some something like that, maybe even more like no one wanted to do it. So I would definitely recommend people watch that as well, especially if you're a Back to the Future fan and stuff like that, because then they spend a lot of time also on how they were able to finally get Michael J. Fox because they didn't, you know. It's like all of a sudden he's the golden boy, right? So it's like the the studio doesn't want to let go of, and like what would what what the what the frick? What would be the how is like is it not overtime? What I mean, speaking of strikes, what the hell is how is SAG after allowing that? Is that like normal? Are we two different productions? Two different productions. Yeah, are people are people able to still do that? Like, like we're filming in the day for this thing, and then um, like, do we, have we heard of other uh, instances like that where it's someone filming all day, especially pre digital? Right now, I feel like it could be a little quicker of set up and reshoots and moving lights and cameras just a little quicker <laughs> but i think it uh, just varies on if the production wants you enough because like that becomes complicated for them like i'm sure they didn't want to work all those overnight shoots like they probably didn't want to do that but they really wanted him so it's not illegal because it's two different jobs like technically yeah. like your job needs to give you a I think eight hour turnaround but since he was doing two different jobs like that was his choice I have seen people do it one time um my husband was doing a he was producing a show and the main guy had like they were filming in San Diego and the main guy had to film like an episode of Bosch so he drove him back to LA he worked Bosch overnight and then they drove back to San Diego so I guess it just depends on like if it's worth it to you like because like I wouldn't do that for for something whack but like he probably thought like man back to the future like this is worth it like i don't know how big yeah. steven spielberg was at the time but oh oh he was big spielberg got big in the 70s early oh, 70s okay. all right okay he was uh he was the golden child he was shooting uh tv shows and then once jaws hit uh that was in the 75 uh, yeah it was probably very jaws, worth it. star yeah. wars oh no et et was before jaws i believe so yeah uh Steven Spielberg, he's he's been a thing for a while. <laughs> I definitely, I definitely have done that even before film work. Um, oh yeah, right. The the, the I rem- is real. I rem- yeah, I remember having a job in the morning, going to college full time, then having a job at night, then doing YouTube for a couple hours, then sleeping two hours, and doing it again. <laughs> yeah. Same, like when I first started doing background in Atlanta, like um. It wasn't as much work, so I didn't feel like I could quit my job and like do background work while I auditioned. Like I didn't feel like it was enough, so I would work at Waffle House. It was a diner out there. I would work there overnight. Cash and then only at that, that time, right? Huh? Cash only at Waffle House at that time. Well, uh, no, like two dollars an hour plus. Oh cash. wait, you're not eighties. Oh uh, no, I was saying like first time I went to Waffle House, they st- they didn't allow they didn't have cards. It was cash oh. only. I thought you meant my pay. No, no, we took cards by then. This is like the early, <laughs> this is like 2009. Um, <laughs> um, 
but yeah, so yeah, just tired. I just remember just being like, I'm going to be in these movies. And I have no idea that background is not going to get you anywhere. <laughs> but I'm just like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to show up. And I lived like so far away from the city. Like I'd take like two trains to get to. It was a lot. So yeah, like I can only imagine with like real money on the table and like yeah. <laughs> what you have the energy to do. Because I, I, I was like, how do you memorize that? I mean, yeah, no, I mean, I, I guess that, that's, remember lines. Oh my goodness! I guess that's why they had Doc do so much of the, you know, of the lines of the, you know, the crazy mumbo jumbo thing, you know, like the te- technical stuff. But I'm just like, Damn. yeah, and to hide the exhaustion. And we were, um, my husband watched movie the first time, and he was just like, um, maybe they started to write that into the show because like maybe he started to visibly look tired because there was like the lines about like oh how's the new job going oh you, you look tired yeah. like did they do that on purpose um, I would imagine right like he seems frazzled he's out of you know whatever let's write it in that he's struggling but yeah and um, speaking my last point yeah. sorry um about masking things I don't know, we didn't like super dive into it, but like it was so interesting how he used to hide his left hand. And now I'm gonna go back and watch stuff and yeah. see it. Like him being on the phone, he like grips his suit jacket a lot. Like I was just like, wow, he really dedicated himself to the hiding it. You get really good. I mean, I remember him with the newspapers a lot, and but that was like spin city, you know, by that point he had already been dealing with it. But I remember, I think he came out with it, or he went public, and there were like two seasons left that of him being in Spin City. Then they brought in Charlie Sheen. <laughs> Charlie Sheen ended up um, replacing him. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, but, but uh, yeah, so I remember once it dropped, trying to figure it out, trying to see it. And, I mean, back then it was impossible. So it was really nice. I mean, them making a montage, basically, of just every which way, you know, and constantly moving. And, and he, and yeah, like yeah, song. the frenetic energy, is that the one? Like, there's one where he's a concierge, at a, the concierge at, at a hotel that he's always just running back and forth. And that's the one answering all the phones and everything like that. And, yeah, he... If, it's kind of the, the, like, certain actors have certain traits, like the whole Tom Cruise, he's always running, or he has a very distinct run. I feel like Michael J. Fox was the one that was, like, constantly, like, this ball of energy that, that never stopped moving. So, yeah. All right. Um, we've got nothing else to add about that. Uh, let's go into final thoughts. Let's start with Mr. Steve. What are your final thoughts? Uh, Final thoughts. So my final thought will be that if you like Back to the Future, if you ever seen Tim Wolf, if you even remotely know who Michael J. Fox is, and you should because you're watching this, you should watch it. I would definitely, I would definitely recommend it to those people that would like to learn a little bit more about the industry. Uh, would like to learn about Parkinson's disease, um, and definitely would like to learn more about Michael J. Fox's life. Uh, one thing that he's been very, extremely careful is, I guess, giving too much and even the glimpses that you get about his personal life makes you feel good because man one thing that i like throughout the film that i'm glad that definitely got to that point was just like man does this guy have a good support system when he showed the picture of his wife i legit thought for a second i'm like Wait, is she dead? Is she like, <laughs> like, is she with someone else? Like, I started thinking about a lot of different things, but the fact that they're still together and 
he supports him so much and they've had so many children. Uh, it makes me feel happy because not only has he given his life to this industry that could be very cold and harsh, even if you're, you know, a top star. Uh, but the fact that he's been such a speaker and an advocate of uh, Parkinson's, and I, I bet you, like I guarantee you, if he wasn't in the position that he is and he wasn't such an advocate of what he's going through, like maybe we will be right now even more and more years behind to finding a cure or perhaps a early diagnosis of this for future people that may unfortunately go through this. Um, so I was very, very happy that I saw this. It was extremely well produced. I loved the editing. I loved the incorporation of his work with the storytelling that they were doing. Um, and yeah, and my only like nitpicky thing about it as a film was literally just the ending. I was just like, it's so abrupt that I was legit like just, I saw the entire credits just hoping like an Avengers movie, there's gonna be like an extra scene or something. Uh, even something as a, as a touch of like, I don't know, him and his family or him and his wife giving each other a kiss, whatever, but just like something to like tie it up. But the fact that it was like, like that, uh, yeah, that was the only thing. But uh, I would definitely recommend it to people that um, live through those 80s movies and people are Michael J. Fox fans and definitely Back to the Future because it's still such a huge cult uh classic and like um a lot of people up to this day still celebrate like back to the future have, have back to the future parties they dress up they do the whole thing i even remember in 2015 because that was the year that they go into the future they did a whole nike did a whole release of like shoes and like the hoverboard this whole thing so yeah overall it was a great watch Awesome. Oh, Marina, <laughs> about your final thoughts. My final thoughts align pretty well with my initial. <laughs> I really loved um, everything about how this documentary was made, how the story gets put across. Um, it definitely is a kick in the butt to like pursue your dreams because you think because like yeah the obstacles that I've had just seem like so small in comparison to some other people and sometimes it's good to have those reminders that a lot of times we're in our own way and um his story is very inspirational if you need a little kick to like wow like I could be doing a little bit more towards my dreams and my goals um it was, yeah, just super beautiful. I, too, am very happy that he has someone. I was really scared, like, not to assume that someone would leave somebody in the situation, but it just seems like they have a very good flow going, no matter what it is that they've had to do to, like, hold on to each other. I'm very happy he had he has a family, and not even just a wife. Like, he's able to have kids and leave, leave a legacy. Um as far as who I would recommend this to, I'd recommend this to anybody who, who's in this industry and especially pursuing acting. I think it's a great story to kind of hear, to like kind of inspire you to do more um, towards your dreams. Um, I'd also um, recommend it to people who are, yeah, fans of, you know, B Back to the Future. I feel like that touched a lot of people. So sometimes we need to give some tribute to the people that made these. Like so many people love that movie and probably have no idea what this man is going through. So if I ever hear of someone who loves them, I'm like, wow, did you see still? Like, it's just, it really changes things for you to know how hard he worked to be on that movie. Um, yeah. So I'd recommend it to thespians and fans of Michael J. Fox, but overall I loved it. And you know, ending was all right. I'm random. So I enjoy a random ending too. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. I'll try to do this real quick. Um, first off, I'm glad you guys brought up, like if you're interested in acting or the business or industry, even though clearly it's 
what he went through in the 80s, it's still a good kind of reminder or, hey, this is a type of stuff, even though certain things have evolved and stuff like that. This is what you should expect. Uh, speaking of Back to the Future, I don't know, it was, was it about a year ago, maybe just six months ago, but I I was on eBay or whatever, and I don't know what I was looking for, but all of a sudden I stumble on a DeLorean. <laughs> that's been, that's, uh, um, yeah, I don't know if Jason remembers, but I was like, hey, there's this DeLorean on sale. <laughs> on eBay and I was I was like it's the starting price was like 20 grand and I was like all right it sounds like I was like should I I was like where am I gonna park it outside in Echo Park <laughs> like, I spend all like this money just to have a DeLorean that might or might not work uh anyway it ended up going for like 50 or 60,000 and I can remember if it was one that had engine or whatever but anyway so yeah so for final thoughts uh if you're into back to the future or if you're into acting or just the industry and how it can be i would definitely re recommend this he had they didn't talk about it much in this but he also did speak about it like if he hadn't gotten famous if he didn't have all that money probably he wouldn't have been able to get the treatment that he that that he did right not even that doesn't even include all the research and stuff that he was able to, he's been able to accomplish with his organization. But that's just uh, another thing of like, if, if you don't have the money, you can get that kind of treatment. So yeah, I would, I would recommend this to, yeah, all sorts of different fans of, you know, Michael J. Fox, uh, movie making and yeah. The last thing I wanted to end with before I pass it over to Jason for final thoughts was oh the one it, 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 the ending was abrupt but I get it I like that what I would have loved to have heard was if they could have found them if they even know who did it or if they were maybe the 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 union people that were driving him back and forth I would imagine that that was like OG. Uh, uh, teamsters or just like old, you know, drivers, and sadly they probably have passed away. But I would have loved to have heard just some teamsters like, yeah, had to throw him like a bag of potatoes, walk him up there. <laughs> I would love to have heard that kind of. Uh, he story. used to fart in the back of the car while he was asleep or something like that. <laughs> I'm gonna dress him. I gotta. I gotta brush his teeth. Anyway, all right. So yeah, Jason, we've made it to final thoughts. So if you'd like to share. Sure. Um, I would say that uh, I, I like this movie. Um, it, it, I know they're seeking a nomination for this thing. It should probably get one. I don't know if it's the best documentary uh, of the year, but I think it's worth nominating because it does some interesting things, like Dino said. This is the film that you could recommend to people who are just like into film generally you can recommend it to people who were back to the future frank fans people who were michael j fox fans people who remember the 80s very fondly and love the 80s like this sort of has all those sort of elements from you know his life and career um uh so there's a lot of people that i would recommend this thing to and also it brings a, a level of awareness to parkinson's that most of us probably don't have um, so I think it, I think this thing has a, a lot of value a, as a documentary as well, not just as a, a life story or a memoir, so to speak for, uh, Michael J. Fox. Um, uh, would I watch it again? It's possible. It's possible I could watch it again. I mean, I'm not like looking to watch it again. I mean, you know, it's not like I can't remember what happened and it, you know, it's mostly this information. Uh, but I did like the, uh, I, I like documentaries that do the animation thing because I think animation is really great as a teaching tool um, because it's such a great visual and I'm a, a visual learner. So I love when documentaries do the little animated things so that we could see things as it happened. You know, like it's, it's a little time machine even because it tells us the story and gives us the animation or whatever. What I thought was kind of funny, the thing that stuck out to me about the story with him getting dropped off and picked up from home, you know, every day was that he was still staying in the same little studio apartment. And I was like, I wonder if that's true. I wonder if he was still in this little tiny apartment, um, you know, 
granted, you know, his success and whatnot? Like, was he too busy to move out? Because I would imagine, yeah, you might be too busy to even move out at that point. Like, I just got to get through the year before I can even think about anything. You know, even though, like, you're about to become, like, the celebrity, the movie star for, like, young people in the 80s. Like, maybe the movie star of the 80s. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Definitely top 10, probably. Um, yeah, so that's my final take on this thing. I really liked it. And I guess if this is my final take, or my, excuse me, my final thought uh, pertaining to all things, I do have a question for Steve. Yeah. Steve, what do you got for us next week? Next week? I don't know why you ask me, because you are very aware that it's your turn next week. Me? Well, yes, since it's my turn, uh, you guys know how I like to get jiggy with it. Uh, we're going to be returning to the Criterion Collection. I'm going to force you guys through another black and white film. One that I've never seen before, as I often do. Um, sorry, Marina. But uh, I have a feeling you'll probably enjoy this one because uh, I've never heard of anyone not enjoying it. Uh, we're going to watch Fellini's Eight and a Half. Ooh. Now, this movie has been like uh, circulating me for a real long time. It's been on my short and long list. I've seen it in video stores. So I'll, I'll be really happy to share this with you guys next week. Nice. Very cool. There you very, go. Very, very cool. So for Marina, El Dandino, Jason Eccles, and me, Steve, that's it. We will catch you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.